The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone jar, water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it, and when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We might not realize it, but what we just heard in the Gospel reading today were the very last words spoken by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Do whatever he tells you. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful invitation. This, this command, in a sense, or this uh, invitation of Mary to do whatever he tells you. It's an invitation to discipleship. It's an invitation to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and this discipleship is very beautifully portrayed to us this weekend in the image of marriage. Our first reading today, the prophet Isaiah even talks about this. He says, no longer will they call you forsaken. No longer will you be desolate or barren. But I shall call you my delight and I will espouse you. Espouse you and I will love you like a bridegroom loves his bride. This beautiful image the church has always seen is this image of Christ being the bridegroom and the church, that's us, being the, the bride. In the early patristics, they always saw that any time that it talked about your land, like our reading tonight says, your land will be espoused, the land is an image of the church. It's an image of, of what the church would become, the Christian church the Catholic Church. So when we hear this image of this, this beautiful imagery of marriage and how God wants to unite himself to us in such an intimate relationship, it's like marriage. He wants to be espoused to us. He wants to be united to us in such a way that it's like a marital bond, you know, that till death do us part. And not, not till just death do us part, but for eternity forever, even more so, even longer lasting than any of you who are married have been called to live out your marital commitment till death do us part. God's going to marry and espouse us and love us in a unique and intimate way in our lives for eternity, forever. It really is a beautiful image to use the image of marriage and use that to explain uh, God's love for us as his disciples. In our discipleship, in our own efforts to follow Jesus Christ, and our own efforts to live good and holy Christian lives, we have this beautiful image of marriage. Something that we all kind of, you know, at least know something about and experience throughout our lives. And for myself, I mean, obviously I'm not married, but... My parents are married, and my grandparents are married, and many of my friends are married. We all have this experience, this physical knowledge and experience of marriage that can help us understand God's love for us. Help us understand how deep that is, how deep that love is. You know, 
I, I think of the image, think to yourself, those of you who are married, think to yourself of the day of your marriage and how in love you were with each other. Hopefully you're still just as far in love. Hopefully you're still just as much in love, maybe even more so in love now. But you see the image of a bride and a groom, and they are just glowing and beaming for each other, right? You see them, and it's like, that's contagious. It makes everybody else in the church be joyful and happy for them on the day of their marriage. That's the joy that God sees in us as he unites himself to us, especially most intimately through his son, Jesus Christ. As we find ways to serve Christ, to love Christ, to know Christ in our lives. And I think really beautifully in our gospel reading today, as we continue that imagery of marriage, we hear Jesus working his first miracle. And that's at the wedding at Cana. It isn't coincidence. It's no coincidence at all. Jesus had a short amount of time to do his public ministry, and this is shortly after his baptism. He wasn't wasting any time. He's got three years to basically to get the world to believe that he's the Savior to get everyone around him to believe, to, to follow him, to become disciples. He's got a short amount of time. So it's very intentional that Jesus chooses the wedding at Cana to work his first miracle. And I think if we pay attention really close to his first disciple, and who's his first disciple? Mary. The first one to say yes to Jesus by offering to carry him in her womb. I mean, to be his mother, his earthly mother. So to that first disciple, if we pay very close attention to that first disciple at this first miracle of Jesus, she can teach us so much about our own discipleship, so much about our own intimate relationship with God the Father and our call to be, uh, to be disciples, to, to follow her in her own discipleship. So the first thing that she teaches us is her, her intentionality of service, her attitude of service. So Mary is at this wedding, and she should be doing what? She should be enjoying this wedding like everybody else. She was a guest. She was invited. She wasn't at the, top, at the head table. She wasn't one of the you know, maids of honor or matrons of honor. She wasn't a place of, of, of prominence in this wedding. She was just a simple guest sitting at another table, probably way at the back but yet she continued to search, to search out for ways to serve, right? She's looking around. She notices that the wine is about to run short, and she could sit there and just say, good luck with that wine. There's a lot of people here. Well, I don't know if you know anything about weddings in the day and age of Jesus, but they lasted about seven days, the party. So you can only imagine how much wine they had already consumed by this point. Who knows what day of the wedding celebration it was, but they would probably drink a lot of wine and it was probably thinking to herself, There's, it's next to impossible, most of us would think, to, bring, to, to get enough wine that everybody could continue this party. But Mary's always looking for that opportunity to serve. She's always seeking out that opportunity to help. And that's what a disciple does. As Christians, as disciples, as Catholics, we're called... Even in the midst of our joyful celebration, in the midst of life's ordinary events, we're called to look and to seek opportunities to serve, to try and find opportunities to help other people. This is the very basic essential of being a disciple, having a heart for others. And Mary portrays this very beautifully at this wedding at Cana for us. And she has this, this uh, intention to make sure that this bride and this groom don't run out of wine. She wants to serve them. She could be just enjoying the party with everybody else, but she chooses to serve. She chooses to open her heart for this bride and this groom. The second thing that Mary teaches us about this uh, at, the, at the wedding at Cana, about being disciples, is Mary teaches us about our confidence in Jesus Christ. How confident are we in Jesus Christ to work miracles in our lives. You know, Mary knew that nobody else in that room had the power to make enough wine. But Mary knew that her son, who was also the only begotten son of God, because this is revealed to her, right, by the angel, Mary knew that Jesus could do it. 
She was confident that her son could work this miracle for her in the midst of them running out of wine. So it wasn't rude of Jesus to say anything to his mother like, what does this have to do with me? What does your concern have to do with me? But it's Mary in her total discipleship and total confidence that Jesus can work this miracle. So Mary actually encourages Jesus in his first miracle. She encourages him to work this first miracle for these people by her own discipleship and by her confidence that he can do it. She teaches us that as disciples, we need to be more confident. How confident are you that Jesus can do for you in your life what you need him to do, what you know only Jesus can do? There are things in our lives, if you've been reading that Matthew Kelly book, right, The Greatest Lie Ever Told in Christianity, what is the greatest lie? That we stop believing that miracles can happen. That we stop believing that, that we can actually grow in holiness. That we can actually be disciples. We stop believing. We think, that's for somebody else. But as a disciple, we have confidence in Jesus Christ that Jesus can do miracles even now. That his miracles didn't stop at the end of the Gospels. That he continues to work some of his greatest miracles here that in a few moments he'll work an extraordinary miracle in the Eucharist as the bread and wine become his body and blood. He's still working miracles today. Are you confident in Jesus as Mary was, as every disciple is called to be confident? And the final thing that Mary sees and that Mary exemplifies for us in her discipleship as that first disciple in this wedding at Cana is her obedience how she is obedient to the will of God. She is obedient to whatever God wants to happen. And she teaches us what? As those last words, do whatever he tells you. Be obedient is basically what Mary is telling us tonight. To be obedient, to do whatever Jesus asks us to do. It might be hard to follow the church's teachings. It might be difficult to live the Ten Commandments day in and day out. But Mary tells us as a disciple, do whatever he tells you. This is where you're going to receive the greatest fruits and graces and blessings in your life is doing whatever he tells you. Being obedient to God. Being obedient to what we know is true and right. Mary beautifully did this all the way through her life, all the way through uh, following Jesus Christ. She was always there at his, at his side and always there at the foot of the cross as Jesus gave her to us as a mother. So she very beautifully, as we begin this ordinary time, we go back to our green vestments and things, we very, Mary very beautifully reminds us of our discipleship and the ordinary of life that sometimes our lives might feel like we've run out of wine. I don't know about you, but I feel like that sometimes. I've run out of wine. I've run out of steam. I've run out of energy to do this discipleship stuff. But she tells us, no, don't run out of steam. Look for opportunities to serve. Be confident that Jesus Christ is working miracles even today in your midst. And be obedient to God. Do whatever he tells you and the wine of God's grace and God's mercy will flow abundantly in our lives.